Controlling our home labs from a console level is a type of control that all of us benefit from. Michael Lynch from Tiny Pilot reached out to me and kindly sent over a sample unit of the Tiny Pilot Pro. And today's video, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts of the Tiny Pilot Pro. I've been using it connected to one of my super micro servers in the home lab. So I'm excited to show you guys this really awesome Raspberry Pi based KVM. So stick around. Hey guys, Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. It has been a minute since I have created a video and lots of things going on uh, professionally, personally, but busy is definitely good. We've got lots of things prepared for future episodes. I just launched a new Discord server. I have revamped my Virtualization How To website, pushing out what I think is top notch content. Definitely subscribe to the newsletter on the site the Twitter feed, uh, the new Discord server, and many other ways that you can reach out and get in touch with me and keep up with the latest content. If we are thousands of miles away from our home lab and we need to reboot a server or we need to change a BIO setting, or have you even been remote and needed to reload the operating system, maybe of your hypervisor if you've experienced a crash, all of those things mean that you need that console access to your hypervisor or to your home server, whatever it's running. Tiny Pilot. Control any computer remotely. Tiny Pilot KVM over IP. Does it work? Yes, absolutely it works. And I have proof in my home lab that that is the case. And I was pleasantly surprised at the features, the capabilities, the functionality of this Tiny Pilot unit. You can view all of the details at tinypilotkvm.com. So all of the features that are available on the website are certainly accurate from what I have seen in testing in my home lab. It's a pure HTML5 interface, and we got native HD video resolution, 1920 by 1080 p We've got boot from virtual storage capabilities, which I will detail that in just a few moments. You can also save remote snapshots. It features 24 frames per second video with less than 200 milliseconds latency and there's a lot of tweaks that you can do with the video so it's just really customizable interface uh, a lot of great features baked and built into that so lots of fellow youtubers have certainly tried out the tiny pilot kvm so i definitely uh, suggest that you check out all of the other videos that are uh, great and go definitely in detail my video review of this product is certainly not unique however i do feel like with a vmware vsphere lab and configuration that i'm running i do have something to say at least a little bit differently from a different angle uh, than others have brought to the table so uh, lots of really great features, once again, uh, with a Tiny Pilot. What is the cost of the Tiny Pilot? Well, the current version is the Tiny Pilot Voyager 2A. It's the newest professional grade KVM over IP device. And certainly it has a lot of features baked in, including this uh, Tiny Pilot Pro operating system that has a lot of really nice tweaks and uh, capabilities that uh, even if you were building this as a custom solution, uh, you may struggle to have some of the features and functionality. So with that being said, this unit is really fantastically built. It's very sturdy, as you can see, and I'm going to show you close-ups of the case in person on my video. Uh, but as you can see, it's got a metal case. Uh, it's got USB-C power. You can also, with an adapter that's an add-on, you can do USB-C or PoE power. Keep in mind, if you are running servers with a VGA port, you will need this VGA to HDMI adapter that is $15. Uh, Michael did send that to me, so I've been testing that with my Super Micro server. And so total is $399. Now, you may say that's a lot of money, and it is a chunk of change for a Raspberry Pi KVM. However, I do think with the functionality and features of this device that it is worth that $399. And as we've all known, the Raspberry Pi board itself has been 
drastically inflated as far as costs. So I'm sure a lot of this cost is due to the shortage of Raspberry Pis, and you know that cost is reflected here in this tiny pilot cost overall. And one thing to call out about these Raspberry Pi based KVMs is you are controlling one device with that. So you don't have the capability to like your enterprise KVMs that you may see, your Belkins, your Raritans, your you know other uh, types of KVMs that you may see in the enterprise data center where you've got like eight feeds or 16 feeds. You don't have that with the Tiny Pilot. So you're not controlling multiple machines. However, Michael does have official documentation on compatible companion HDMI KVMs that are basically just HDMI switches that allow you to control not only the video, but also allows the tiny pilot to be switched from one computer to another. Michael does have an official GitHub link, which I'll post this in the video notes, that detail some models that at least unofficially are compatible with the tiny pilot that uh, Michael sees as compatible to that. So you don't want to buy this thinking that you're going to be out of the box able to control multiple computers. Okay, so guys, I wanted to give you a physical overview of the Tiny Pilot. Uh, very sleek unit, as you can see. Uh, all metal case, so no plastic. Everything is very, very sturdy. I really like this about the Voyager 2. And lots of interesting port options here. Uh, especially when we look at this uh, data side, we can see we've got the HDMI adapter, we've got the USB-C power adapter, we've got the data port, and then if we flip around to the other side, we've got our network connection, we've got two USB 3 ports, and then we've got two normal USB ports. So as you can see, really great sturdy unit, uh, fan on the side to keep things cool. Uh, everything is well made, well built, uh, so you're not going to see an issue with quality there. Really like that. I wanted to also give you guys a look at the cabling that I have in place. Uh, of course, with my Super Micro servers, I do have the VGA port. So what you're going to need, and we looked at that on the order page for the product itself, you're going to need this HDMI to VGA adapter. And this is actually powered as well to do some of that transcoding between the, the two uh, technologies, VGA to HDMI. So all I simply did was plug this port into my server that I was actually managing. So it draws power from that. Then you've got your HDMI cable that plugs in like so. And this HDMI connection, of course, plugs into your uh, tiny pilot device. So that's kind of how everything hooks up. Uh, the power USB-C, of course, just goes to the power adapter. Then your data port is just simply a USB-C connection to USB-A connection that plugs into your server. So that's how all of the ports line up and that's how the adapter looks and just a general overview of the connectivity to your tiny pilot of course uh, michael has great documentation on the tiny pilot site so that's definitely the source of truth there that you want to reference if you have any questions about any of that so that's a look at the great features at least on paper on the website for tiny pilot but let me show you guys around the Tiny Pilot interface with Tiny Pilot Pro OS loaded on the Tiny Pilot and show you guys the capabilities, the menu options that you get in this unit. So as you guys see, I have a connection to a super micro server running VMware vSphere using the Tiny Pilot Pro. So as you guys can see, I'm going to refresh the browser session and there are no plugins that are popping up or any prompts to install plugins and i have not done that previously uh, before recording the video so as you can see one of the really awesome things i love about this kvm is the fact that it does not require any 
old Java plugins or Java in general. Um, and it's totally HTML5 based. So not only does it perform well, but again, you don't have to worry about those antiquated, insecure browser plugins that quite frankly, you still see in enterprise grade KVMs that you would buy. So what I thought I would do is just go through the menus for you guys so you can see all of the capabilities that are afforded by the tiny pilot. So under the system menu, you've got security menu, virtual media, update, host name, video settings, export, logs, power. So starting at the bottom, you've got power features for the tiny pilot itself, logging capabilities in case you need to troubleshoot uh, with the manufacturer. Uh, you can export your settings. You have video settings. Uh, you can swap over to H.264 for higher quality. However, it does default to the MJPEG streaming mode for the best compatibility. And of course, you've got these really cool sliders that you can just in a moment's notice, change your quality, change the frame rate, uh, so on and so forth. One of the things I like under the system menu is this update option. So with your tiny pilot, you're not going to have to boot off of a micro SD card or type of process that takes a lot of effort and could be error prone. Um, it updates right from the web interface, which I really like. That's a nice feature. Um, security, just popping up here real quick. Under the security settings, you've got uh, web access. We can flag on that we want to require username and password, which certainly you would want to do. Uh, you can enable SSH access. You can also ensure that your connection requires HTTPS. I want to dive in a little bit further on the virtual media. Virtual media with a tiny pilot is a breeze. And this is really awesome when you start to think about the capabilities of what you can do remotely. So let's say you've got a tail scale connection, a twin gate connection, a wire guard connection to your home network. You can literally from anywhere in the world, connect your home network, manage virtual media, boot your device that you are managing with a tiny pilot and actually boot from the ISO media that you upload to the tiny pilot device. And that is as simple as clicking this add disk image button and you can choose from computer, from URL. So you can pull directly from a website or you can just simply choose ISO image like I have here with a Windows 11 22H2 ISO and it uploads to your uh, virtual media of your tiny pilot. Now, once you have the virtual media uploaded, then you can simply select the mount option and you can mount that as a flash drive or as a CD-ROM device. So it'll emulate either. And so that's really, really cool to think that again, remotely, you can mount virtual media, install an operating system or boot any other utility that is booted from an ISO image. So I'm going to close that out. Under actions, we've got paste functionality, screenshot, wake on LAN, which is nice if you need to wake your device uh, up from a specific power state uh, using those wake on LAN packets. You can do that directly from the uh, tiny pilot device. Under the view settings, you've got a lot of configuration options here. You can choose whether you want to show the keyboard, key history. You can go to full screen, cursor options here. And of course, help, we can look at what software versions we're running. We can uh, have the links easily accessible for technical support or the fact pages. So really great options here with the tiny pilot and everything about the unit just works as you would expect. It's exactly what you would want to be able to control your home server in the home lab or even in an enterprise environment. I can see a lot of edge cases for this, especially for MSPs or uh, organizations that have edge environments that are extremely remote and they want to have that 
out of band ability to interact with a workstation or a server device. Guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this look at the Tiny Pilot Voyager 2A, a really great Raspberry Pi based KVM that will allow you to access your home lab and any other workstation or server that you want. And one of the great standout features, in my opinion, is the easy virtual media that you can easily mount ISO images to and remotely boot your server or workstation from that virtual media and reload an entire operating system, not even physically located where the server or workstation is. So if you're looking for a KVM that is highly capable, HTML5 based interface with no nasty Java plugins and at least with some customizations, capable of potentially connecting to multiple servers or computers, the Tiny Pilot just may fit the bill for you. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe to the Discord server. Sign up on Virtualization How To for the newsletter. Keep up with me on Twitter. All of those uh, great social media links that you can uh, easily follow. Keep on home labbing, and I will see you guys on the next video.